I'm Chris Sneed and today we're going to talk about how a wind tunnel works and go over the wind tunnel data from our air kit. Uh, you can use these numbers for anything you'd like to but basically we're just going to go over how a wind tunnel works so that you can get an idea of what the data means and how that could be helpful for uh, your racing program or how you can use it to help set up your car. A wind tunnel works by pulling air down a hallway of a known area at a constant speed. Uh, you typically use very large high horsepower fans. Now the wind isn't actually going all that fast. Typically it's uh, 60 to 90 miles an hour, but it's a constant speed which gives a really good reading. Now the air flows over the car. What happens to the car is measured on scales that are built into the floor. These scales measure each wheel, how much lift or downforce, and how much drag or pull back towards the back of the wind tunnel each wheel has. So you can measure all sorts of things. You can, you can change just the downforce for one corner and that kind of thing. So that you get real data. This is what data looks like when you get it out of the wind tunnel. This is three different setups and two pulls a piece. You always do two pulls because you want to make sure your data is correct. Uh, as you can see, we have a full air kit, which means our full mid-level, mid-angled wing, a short, shorter straightaway sweeper type track. This is a longer straightaway track setup with a two degrees in the wing and an inch and a, half, and a one and a half degree on the splitter. The next one is just to test on a zero degree wing and we'll get over, we'll get into what happened with that here in just a second. This input speed is strictly for the formula. Um, what it does is allow you to use this data at different speeds. We use 100 miles an hour because it's an easy number to remember. You can use any number you would like. Uh, if you want to see what the car does, it, it, it's at full speed. So like 130, 150, 200 miles an hour. You can even see it all the way down to you know five miles an hour if you wanted to. You can use this number any way you'd like. This column is the drag horsepower column. And this one's very important. What this tells you is how much horsepower it takes to achieve your mile per hour target. So this horsepower number is what the Mini Cooper requires to get to 100 miles an hour. This is the drag in, in pounds. This is basically how the horsepower is figured. I feel like the horsepower is a better number because it's much easier to comprehend that I need a motor to make this much horsepower to overcome the aerodynamic aids that I have on the car. This is the pounds of force at speed. This is your lift or downforce numbers. Negative numbers are downforce, positive numbers are lift. You have to remember though that almost all stock cars have lift. So you're going to see numbers that are positive. Those numbers are lower than the stock car, but may not actually be able to get into downforce. So this is the total amount of downforce that the car makes. This, this is merely taking the downforce from the rear and adding the downforce from the front to it and giving you a total number. This number is not necessarily all that important because it doesn't show you any sort of picture of what the car is actually doing. This is the front downforce number. This number comes from a couple of things. It comes from the splitter. It comes from canards if you have those and other aerodynamic aids. And it also comes from how much rear wing you have in the car. If you have a lot of rear wing in the car, you can actually lift the front wheels up. This is the rear wing. This is how much downforce is on the rear tires. As you can see, you can make a lot more rear downforce than you can front due to the fact that the wing is much more efficient than the splitter at making downforce. So as you can see in the second and third runs, we took some wing out and it made more downforce on the front end because there's less downforce on the back, that weight was transferred to the front and the front end came down. As you can see, once you pass the two degree mark, the front end no longer gets heavier. It merely just reduces downforce off the back and reduces slightly on drag. Side force, this, is, this number is a wind tunnel number and it's really strictly to tell you that you have 
your arrow components on straight. Um, if you had your wing on crooked, then this number could be very, very high. You, it would need to be very, very high before it had any effect on what you were doing, and it would it would probably be very obvious that you had something wrong. This, this number more has to do with the car being straight in the wind tunnel and um, than it does with anything else. This is the overall arrow balance as a percentage from the front. So this gives you how much front downforce as a percentage of total that the car has. This one is a nice way to look at it and see how much of a percentage you have on the front, which is the, the front is always gonna have the least amount of downforce because it's the hardest place to make downforce. So you wanna be mindful of front downforce. It's much easier to make downforce on the back with a wing than it is to make downforce on the front without creating lots and lots of drag. That's the downside to creating lots of downforce on the front is you end up with a lot of drag. We don't use the lift drag column on the graph. Uh, we feel like that it's not beneficial to what we do. And we feel like we can get all the data picture that we really need from the columns that we use. Uh, thanks for watching the video. If you have any questions, you can feel free to email me at chris at sneedspeedshop.com. And you can also look at the data. We post everything on our website at sneedforspeed.com. Thanks.